Hello and welcome, this is Noah with Nomad Gaming, and we are here with a video for the Marvel Champions LCG, which is a living card game produced and distributed by Fantasy Flight Games. Today we have a player card review for the She-Hulk Hero set. We're going to cover the hero, the signature cards, the arch enemy and villain cards, and how she plays with each aspect. So without further ado, let's call this session to order. In Marvel Champions, each player chooses a two-sided identity card, which starts on their alter ego side face up. She-Hulk is on one of five heroes included with the core set. Her alter ego, Jennifer Walters, is a powerhouse attorney who always knows when is the right time to Hulk out. Let's jump deeper into the statistics to see what we're going to be working with here. 15 whopping hit points make She-Hulk tough to topple. Definitely worth noting that this hero can take a hit. Her hand size is 6 in Alter Ego and 4 in She-Hulk. Basically average, so not a lot to discuss there. With 5 recover, she's definitely able to make use of her large health pool. Her main stats are 1 thwart, 3 attack, and 2 defend. She can handle her own against an enemy and definitely has been engineered for the fight. In Alter Ego form, uh, Attorney Walters has the Attorney and Gamma traits, and she is thematically appropriate with their ability, I Object which is an interrupt when threat would be placed on a scheme, prevent one of that threat limit once per round. Hello! Stall out the standard progress on any scheme? Not bad. While one threat may not seem like a lot, it sure adds up. Saving three or four threat over the course of a game could buy us multiple turns if necessary. We will find that the signature card pool adds plenty more flavor to She-Hulk's day job and expands the tools available for her managing threat. More on that in just a minute. Sometimes a girl just needs to hulk out though. In hero mode, we get an Avenger trait and keep Gamma. We also get the best named ability, I believe, of the core set, Do You Even Lift? Response, after you change to this form, deal two damage to an enemy. This is repeatable free targeted damage. I can certainly figure out how to work with that. Our identity card is certainly set to flip more than once throughout the game, so we're definitely going to get to toss around this damage. Let's take a peek at the signature card pool and see how else we're going to be laying the smack down with this encounter deck. Of course, each hero in Marvel Champions has a dedicated 15 card signature pool that should be included in every deck for that hero. This is where we really see the flavor and utility of the character come to life. Let's take a peek at what we're going to bring to the table with our She-Hulk deck. Our signature ally is going to be Hellcat, Patsy Walker. She is a 3 cost ally with 3 health. She has 2 thwart and 1 attack with 1 consequential damage for either action. She has the Avenger uh, trait and she has action, return Hellcat to your hand. This is the type of fun, versatile ability that I like to play around with. She lets us get in a couple of actions and then reset her by bouncing her to our hand and playing her again. If we're in hero mode and we find ourselves short a resource from a smaller hand size, pop Hellcat back up to our hand and spend her for her wild resource. I can see a lot of creative ways to play with this in the future and certainly look forward to finding other ways to leverage this ability to your advantage. Of course, our Jolly Green Giant is a professional advocate. She runs the Superhuman Law Division, which is a one-cost support location with an alter ego action, thwart, exhaust Superhuman Law Division, and spend a mental resource. Remove two threat from a scheme. Our legal counsel continues her threat reduction theme with her legal practice, a zero-cost event, which has the skill and thwart keywords. This is an alter ego action, thwart, choose and discard up to five cards from your hand, then remove one threat from a scheme for each card discarded this way. So for six costs, legal practice, plus five of the cards in your hand, you can remove five threat. Let's be honest, this is a trap. You have to get a better return on your cards and this game is going to eat you alive. Occasionally this is going to save you from disaster and there are those hands where you just aren't going to play much so you can play this and then toss the rest of the stuff in your hand for some benefit, but that's not where you want to be when you're playing this game. One interesting facet of She-Hulk's character is that she has some ability to control her transitions. That ability is captured in the three cost event Split Personality. It is an action change your form, flip your identity card, and then draw up to your printed hand size. This enables some really fun and tactical decision making. The extra flip on a turn can open all kinds of options depending on what you need and how. And don't forget that switching her f to her alter ego form is going to deal, I'm sorry, switching to her hero form is going to deal two direct damage uh, and then ending the turn in alter ego form might just be what was needed to stave off some key threat. 
Um, the extra cards that are going to aren't going to hurt us at all. I mean, I I think that when you get to draw back up to your printed hand size, hopefully this is the last card out of your hand, and then you're going to get to take a peek at a fresh new hand. Um, but definitely wanting to do that in alter ego form so that you get the bigger hand size but either way um, you're really going to want to have an empty hand when you play this guy she hulk is a powerhouse uh, and while she can't be contained in the game these cards do a great job of capturing her flavor and some pretty strong abilities gamma slam is a four cost event that is going to deal up to 15 damage depending on how much damage we've already taken to our hero with 15 health we're going to need a health boost to make it happen for the full 15 but it seems rational to set a personal goal at dropping the big 15 on a villain every now and again ground stomp takes a different approach to massive damage by dealing one to each enemy. In a multiplayer setting, this can put in major work either setting up or finishing off baddies all over the table. Of course, She-Hulk has the superhuman strength, which comes as a two cost upgrade and gives plus two attack and has a forced response. After She-Hulk attacks, discard superhuman strength, stun the attacked character. It's clear from any amount of table time in this game that stun is a good tool and getting to drop extra damage while doing our stun is great. There are strategic choices here about whether to play this before or after an attack on any given turn, but those choices are a in large part why many of us are playing this game. The Gamma Slam wants us to take a good bit of damage, but sometimes the encounter deck is just bashful. Fortunately for us, our jolly green friend comes with her own way to take a couple of hits. Focused Rage. Focused Rage is not only going to deal us damage, but it will do my personal favorite game action, draw cards. The three cost upgrade has a hero action, exhaust Focused Rage, and take one damage, draw one card. Drop these on our hero and go to town. This makes up for the smaller hand size in hero mode, pumps our damage a bit, and pulls more action. Solid card. Also, we get the one cost event, one two punch, which is a skill response. After you make a basic attack using your attack, ready She-Hulk. She, this could open up another attack, set us up to flip forms and heal, or just get us ready to thwart. Okay, that last one's not gonna happen that much, but it could happen. So that's what we've got in the signature card pool. Let's take a look at who stands between She-Hulk and total victory. Here, we meet Titania. She-Hulk's nemesis and signature minion. With 6 health, she already is nothing to scoff at, but take a look at her attack of X, which is going to be equal to her remaining HP. Ouch! With no damage on this one, we're going to be getting, she's going to be swinging for one third of our total health. Titania is going to be top priority when she hits the board. Her side scheme is personal challenge, which enters play with three threat plus one per player and requires that we clear it before we can make any progress on the main scheme. She's also bringing the condition genetically enhanced which is going to add three hit points to the minion with the highest printed HP. Not a fun synergy for us when Titania is on the table. We also see the treachery Titania's fury which causes more attacks from our nemesis or heals her. That's bad news. And finally, Jennifer Walters can sometimes be bogged down by her legal work, in which case she either exhausts or adds an acceleration token. If this hits the table, I don't see a lot of situations where I'm not feeling a little bit tired, if, I know what you, if you know what I mean. She-Hulk is a smashing all-star. The direct damage on her within, and within her signature pool are more than a nod to a good idea. It's a full on neon flashing billboard telling us to jump on the damage train. With a massive 15 HP we can sure soak up some hits and we sort of want to use uh, that for a huge payoff with our Gamma Slam. Overall her signature pool and gameplay provide a lot of fun decisions for us throughout the game and can really make She-Hulk the star of the table. Let's take a look at some of the ways we can pair her with the game's four aspects. In aggression we are just we just start with the big green guy in the room, the Hulk. Hulk is certainly in game as an aggression ally and is naturally where we want to be if we want to have one big gamma jam going on in this deck. Our hero and signature pool do damage. This aspect does damage. This may be getting a bit repetitive, but she Hulk aggression is really good at smashing. Cards like Battle Fury can complement us to take damage for benefit 
uh, theme and she that She-Hulk has a, a fondness for and the ability to take multiple attacks and spread out the damage is going to help us kill plenty of minions each turn so that we can trigger things like Hall of Heroes or chase them down for big payoffs. If the smash and grab style is not your thing, if, is your thing, this is going to be your home. You need to remember uh, to include chase them down to support threat management and to play with someone else who's interested in keeping your team in the game. I will try to hide it, but leadership She-Hulk does not excite me. If you disagree, leave us a comment and tell me why. Maybe you can change my mind. Leadership does the Swiss Army knife does have the Swiss Army knight trait of being able to do it all. But in hero mode, we have a small hand size, so we're going to be looking uh, for really low cost allies and events to play. We do get single turn hero stat boost from cards like Lead from the Front and Morale Boost, which make things better and pair well with our signature pool of readying. Uh, but this is just not getting me too excited. Our leading lady definitely looks good in green, though. Under the protection aspect, we of course find healing and damage mitigation that pair well with our mammoth hit points and decent defense. As far as specific synergies go, I look at things like counterpunch to take advantage of both the high hit points and the damage hero synergy and our high attack value. Uh, another great synergy is get behind me, which is going to cancel when revealed effects and then draw the villain in for an attack, uh, which our She-Hulk is definitely ready to handle. The final aspect is justice, and since She-Hulk likes to spend time in both forms, uh, you're going to pick up a little bit more incidental threat. This aspect will give us a great way to manage that. I think many of enjoy the card Great Responsibility, and She-Hulk makes great use of the extra damage. How fun is it to take a hit with Great Responsibility and then drop a Gamma Slam? Then cards like Concussive Blow can help us deal damage and confuse the villain before we need to flip back and tend to our law practice. Finally, we have a small hand size in hero mode, and it's important for us to have those low-cost, high-value cards that we can play. Uh, yes, we might have one or more of those double resource cards, but when you only have four cards in hand, uh, you need to get a ton of value from low-cost cards. And this aspect has several one- and two-cost cards, like Followed, For Justice, Surveillance Team, or Under Surveillance, that are going to give us huge utility for a low cost. Our sample deck for this hero is going to be our Justice She-Hulk build. Uh, this deck is looking to take advantage of the alter ego benefits that we get from this hero and then use aspect cards to keep our threat in check. Uh, then we can turn over for huge damage turns in our hero mode and get the job finished. Uh, which aspect do you think pairs best with She-Hulk? Do you have a deck list that you've found success with? Leave us a comment or a link to that deck list and show us how you're working with this unique hero. That brings us to the end of another hero review. Let us know what you think about She-Hulk. Is she an overpumped phony, or does this character actually know how to drop the gavel? Thank you again for joining us here at Nomad Gaming. We're working on some great new content featuring deck building, live play, and of course the rest of our hero reviews. Leave a comment, tell us what you uh, would like to see on the channel, and of course, let us know what you think of our content so far. If you would like to lend us your support for free, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Uh, take a look at some of our previous videos, including our first look into the revealed campaign expansion, The Rise of Red Skull. And until next time, friends, let's go game!